as a creator and a gearhead, it's easy to get wrapped up in constantly upgrading your gear over and over and over. The quest for the best possible quality through tiny little details that your average viewer will never notice is not a very rewarding one, but it is an addicting one. But what is rewarding is when the brakes get slammed on your gear quest and you find that perfect piece of kit that satisfies your workflow needs and sounds pretty great in the process too. Useful tech education and gaming nostalgia that won't put you to sleep. Get subscribed and turn on notifications so you won't miss the next guide. I'm Apos Vox here to make tech easier and more fun, and I've made some questionable choices in the name of audio quality here on the channel. Ever since the original Elgato Game Capture HD gaming capture card launched at a competitive price, I've reviewed quite a few expensive microphones on the channel. I'm even using one right now, the Electra Voice RE320. And I'm not gonna lie, being obsessive about audio quality while being unhappy with every solution I had found was pretty stressful for a while. Thankfully, I finally settled on the Electra Voice RE20 and the DBX286S channel strip as my primary means of processing desktop audio about a year ago now and have never looked back. But it wasn't until last fall that I finally found an on-camera mic to fall in love with. But oh man, do I love it. And I kind of want a second. This, what you're hearing right now, is the Sennheiser MKH416, a short shotgun microphone that's actually used on TV sets and in many voiceover studios. This was sent to me by Sennheiser for review and he used to produce my OBS Master Class in the fall of 2017. With it, I purchased a Sound Devices Mix Pre 3 audio recorder and an Atomos Ninja Inferno video recorder to optimize my workflow for such an intense shoot. I'd previously been committed to using lavalier mics for my shoots, and honestly I didn't expect to use the MKH416 much past this course, but I use it for every shoot I can these days. This may be the last on-camera mic that I need in my studio. I'm almost tempted to get a second and replace my RE20 with it for my desktop shooting setup over there as well, which is kinda crazy. This is a sturdily built matte black microphone that comes in a great case with a windsock. Sennheiser boasts this microphone as having high feedback rejection, immunity to humidity, and very low self noise. Originally developed in the 1970s, this mic was specifically designed with RF modularity in mind so that the microphone can adjust its impedance to match that of the audio cables being used to prevent significant self noise. This means it has become commonly used for films, TV shows, and even voiceover studios due to its clarity and warm bass response without the boomy proximity effect of large diaphragm condenser mics. The off-axis rejection is very nice here, and the sound... Ooh, the sound. <laughs> I've been asked many times since using this mic for videos what kind of post-processing I'm doing to my vocals to make them sound so dang good, and for the first time in a long time, my answer is... None. Yes, with the Sennheiser MKH416, I perform zero post-processing on the microphone recording, other than adding a little gain to bring the levels up. No compression, no EQ, nothing. While I may find some light EQ or compression settings to keep things balanced in the long term and play with my voice a little bit, I'm blown away by how great this microphone sounds right out of the box. The mic works great with my Mix Pre 3, and I've been very impressed with how little power or gain it requires to still get good sound out of it. It still requires 48 volts phantom power, but it doesn't require anywhere near as much gain as something like my Rode NTG2 does, which further helps prevent the system noise and keeps it pretty quiet. In my current recording set, I have a little bit of echo and some computer and server noise, but otherwise it's a very silent microphone. I use this microphone primarily for on-camera shoots, but it's got quite the following for studio voiceover recordings. To touch on that, here's my buddy Mike from Booth Junkies to tell you what's what. Hey there, Mike Delgadio here from the Booth Junkie YouTube channel. Thank you so much to Epos Vox for having me over to talk about the MKH416 mic by Sennheiser. This mic, I think, is really ideal in many voiceover situations, and I'll just give you a quick uh, idea of my opinions on it and why I think so. First, it's a high quality microphone. It has an extremely lo low noise floor. It is extremely durable. It's made to be used out on set on a boom pole where it's gonna get potentially knocked around, moved around. It's been a very, very durable mic for me. Second is it's extremely quiet. 
when you have this microphone plugged into a, a high quality preamp, there's no, there's no hiss, there's no noise. You're not going to get anything from the microphone other than the signal you're sending into it. Love that about this microphone. Third, it is a low profile microphone. So this microphone can be up, out of your way. And so if you're doing voiceover, your copy can be right in front of you. You can have this microphone up in front of you. It stays out of your way. I have a completely unobstructed view of my copy. So I don't have to worry about looking through a pop filter, looking over a microphone, looking under a microphone. I can see everything I need about the, the copy. Lastly, the pattern is super helpful for less than ideal studios. So I'm in my whisper room, it's acoustically treated, but not everybody has this. If you're, if you're working in less than, ideal situ, uh, less than ideal situation, the very narrow hypercardioid pattern for this microphone is super helpful. It's got great rejection of noise from the side. So if you have a computer over there, or if you've got traffic off to the side, you can target this microphone right at your voice and it will help reject some of that outside noise. Really, it's a super, it's an expensive mic, but man, you get the quality. I've had this one for years, years, and it is absolutely rock solid. People ask me all the time about my pop filter or my shock mount that I use for this. This is just an, a super cheap, newer compression one, and it hangs right off, allows me to mount it right to any scissor arm. Really, Great for uh, for insulating it from uh, from bumps and and things that I do <laughs> do in the studio. So that's my opinion of the Sennheiser MKH416. I hope that helps. I'll talk to you next time. Thanks. While I will always try out new hardware and gear just to for reviews and to expand my knowledge and experience base, I am fairly set on the Sennheiser MKH416 being my primary mic moving forward. Switching audio hardware all the time is very problematic for maintaining consistent quality in videos, so I'm very happy to have this new setup that I can just turn on and go with every time I record. As always, affiliate product links will be in the description down below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video, subscribe for more awesome tech content, and I will see you in the next one. This video is sponsored by viewers like you. Our videos would not be possible without the generosity of those of you who contribute to one of our fan funding options be it donor box, Twitch subscriptions, direct contributions via PayPal, or Patreon. To join our inner circle and get behind-the-scenes looks at videos, go to eposvox.com support to learn more, and join us on Discord at eposvox.com Discord. Thanks!